Pyramid Cave is a stage with a massive skill ceiling. Even though the stage can be done very quickly, the variance between the top 20 runners is just as large as an RNG stage. And that's not a dig on the runners, I just truly believe it's that difficult. There's no time for a break in any section of the run. You are on a train going full speed and there are only two ways to stop. You beat the stage or you derail. I've decided the best way to go about teaching Pyramid Cave is in blocks. The reason being is if you look at everything all at once, it will seem daunting to learn and understand. At least that's what it was for me. So breaking it up into sections that you can tunnel vision onto made it much less of a hassle when I figured out how to finally tackle this stage. So. To start, here's the stage completed in full. The tunnel is the most information dense section of this tutorial and that's because it's much less straightforward than it seems. There's three reasons for that. The camera change as you're falling, the fact that the curved floor isn't smooth so if you end up between two faces, Sonic will immediately begin losing speed and if that wasn't enough of an issue to deal with, do you remember in City Escape when I mentioned that speed pads more often than not slow you down? Well, that's the case here too. Not only do some of the speed pads slow you down, but if you hit ones that speed you up in a bad location, you'll end up dislodging from the floor, which is the worst thing to have happen here. The camera is probably the simplest one to deal with. When falling, wait until you see Sonic reach the second ring and start holding upright and B so that you begin charging a spin dash immediately as you touch the ground. Your goal is to hit the middle of these two speed pads. And speaking of speed pads, you'll want to avoid speed pads in this tunnel except for the ones you hit already, and this set of two directly in the center of the tunnel. These are the only ones that will speed you up. Avoid every other one. And how do we avoid slowing down as much as possible? Well, honestly, there's a ton of information, but the general breakdown is on straight sections. Stick to this red band to avoid changing slope faces as much as possible. Being on the band has the added benefit of avoiding all speed pads, and when going past the turns, you'll want to change sides so as to keep Sonic from flinging off the wall. A word of warning, dislodging from the wall can be much worse than Sonic just being in the air for a few seconds. This can happen, and it happens enough that I think every runner has or will have a clip of this at some point. The only time you won't be actively fighting the game to stay on the red band is after the second bend when your goal is to stay in the center to hit the double speed pads. After hitting them, stay just under the red line because now you have so much speed that it's really easy to fling off anywhere. After hitting the the ramp you'll want to hit and hold B to light dash, chaining into a spin dash charge. The time you'll want here is any 12 second checkpoint, but honestly, if you can get even 15 second checkpoints, I would move on because there are much higher priorities in this stage. 
This section is not a simple one, and I remember having to do it for dozens of hours on my own because of just how simple it was to fling off or lose speed or whatever. So if you're struggling, here's two things that might help you. You're either holding too high on the red line and still getting flung off, or you're going too low and almost like a magnet getting stuck between two slow faces. This section is precise, so I wish you the best. Continuing from the light dash, spin dash, and jump to bounce off of the glass part of this hourglass. What this does is give you a convenient redirection to avoid getting stuck under the ceiling, and if you hold left, then homing attack as you're rising, you can make it on top. From here, we're going to spin dash down and fit Sonic snugly between the corner and the chow box. We're going to do a pseudo bounce. For whatever reason, there is a triangular collision in the corner. Because of that triangle, if you spin dash while aiming Sonic at the white donut here, you'll be sent really high into the air. This is only possible with the chow box not being broken though, so be careful. Uh, a slight tangent, I've learned a lot of people don't realize this, but when charging a spin dash, Sonic isn't a perfect sphere. Instead, he's slightly pointed towards the angle you hold on the analog stick, so if you use this to your advantage, you can make sure to face the exact angle to maximize the pseudo bounce. Anyway, after releasing the spin dash, Sonic will zoom up when he passes the wall Wall, homing attack and try to land on the first arch, where you'll walk to the back of the platform and charge a spin dash jump over to the building. Spin dash jump to the ramp, or if you're feeling fancy, spin dash hover instead. After hitting the ramp, light dash chain into a spin dash once again and hit the enemy using the extra height to homing attack directly towards the upgrade. Normally I want this section to take around 17 seconds. If the arch seems too difficult, you can use the snake boy to the left and you can land on him and jump to the arch instead. And if you also struggle with that, don't worry, jump onto one of the railings and charge a spin dash pointing to the other railing and you should get a pseudo bounce to get over the arch. It will give you much more height than you need though, so there is some time loss, but it's certainly faster than doing the normal route. This kind of pseudo bounce is actually also possible anywhere in the stage you see railings like this, so if you can't get a super bounce, they can all be replaced with a pseudo bounce. Finally, we get to the only section that I would consider a break, only because of how straightforward it is after practicing it countless times. Immediately after getting the bounce bracelet, you'll charge a spin dash and do a super bounce. Super bounces are done by bouncing into a wall and gaining extra height based on the momentum Sonic had before hitting the wall. Remember, you want to bounce before you hit the wall. It's just that the closer to the wall you are, the higher the bounce you'll get because you have more speed. This super bounce in particular is very lenient, so you can be very far away and still get the height to reach the hourglass, which is our goal here. After hitting it, you can either hit the enemy, bounce twice, and then homing attack to skip the slow spring, or you can homing attack and run around the enemy because realistically the spring loses something within the magnitude of a second. It's not really a big deal. And here we'll do a strong super bounce beside the door to get over the wall. After getting over the wall, you're going to want to try and land on the rail. If you want to zoom a bit faster on the rail, jump off and bounce onto it. But uh, just avoid mashing the inputs or you'll fall through. As soon as you reach the end of the rail, hug the right wall to keep the ghosty from giving Sonic a hug and wasting your time. And here we're going to be skipping the next door as well. This is the biggest skip in Pyramid Cave because you're able to cut out this giant unnecessary loop. What you'll do is position Sonic directly underneath the T-shaped intersection and then do a fully charged spin dash jump holding directly up on the analog stick. If you do that correctly, you should clip through. You have very few frames to jump so it'll take some practice. My advice is I'd rather waste one extra second taking my time to make sure the setup is 100% good rather than lose five seconds if it fails. If you miss the door, instead of going back to the hourglass, you can do a spin dash jump and turn to get on the wall. Don't know how much faster it is, but it's pretty dang cool. And if you can't get the hype for the super bounce, you can just pseudo bounce from the key stand instead. It's really as simple as it looks. For the second tunnel, hit the hourglass, get onto the right wall, and follow basically the same rules as the first tunnel. The speed pads are in different locations though that you'll need to watch out for. Also, because you don't have a speed pad at the beginning, it's really important to fully charge the spin dash at the beginning. I try to reach this checkpoint at 57 seconds or faster because the rest of the stage should be around 27 seconds long. The final section starts with a super bounce onto the building. Once on the 
building, you'll be setting up for the second skip in the stage called Snake Skip, which oddly enough doesn't exist on the DC version because the snakes took a day off or something. Spin dash over the gaps twice and then jump and homing attack to quickly slow down, then run up the snake and charge a spin dash on the statue. If that setup is too difficult, you can stand here and hold upright to get up instead. From here, you'll be learning the joys of skewed gravity. When you spin dash off the statue and bounce quick enough, instead of bouncing down, it'll be perpendicular to the angle you had on the statue. We use this to skip over to the wall of the loop. When in skewed gravity, there's always a trade-off between distance and speed. If your speed drops below the threshold, you'll lose skewed gravity and just fall to your death. So what you want to do ideally is to make sure you get the distance to reach the wall, always homing attack cancel to make sure you get more distance, and then hold a a further right angle so that you guarantee that Sonic will stick to the wall. This only saves like 4.5 seconds to the fastest non-snake skip route, which the TLDR for that route is that you jump over the speed pads and once you get loop speed, then you jump and skip the first loop. Then you skip the second loop however you want. Double bounce over this wall, homing attack around the barricade, spin dash onto the rail, hit the hourglass, spin dash once and then a second time, and don't cancel the second spin dash until you pass this slope unless you want a roasted hedgehog. Do a super bounce or pseudo bounce to skip the loop, and finally a much more lenient skewed gravity bounce gets you to the goal. This stage is beyond difficult, and I think up until I was 20th place on the leaderboard, I was still getting 147 pyramid caves on average. So if you're struggling, don't worry, everyone has at one point. My biggest word of advice is please, please break it down into sections and only focus on one section at a time. You're going to improve quickly for sure. Uh, speaking of, this is the breakdown of the sections. Looks cleaner now, huh? Yeah, I'm learning how to make text look better. Have a good day and best of luck on your runs. Until next time, bye!